areas along our Kansas's Whitewater River. As the queen of her species, this thick-legged predator is known for her domination of the pack, and her one advantage is being able to change her spots at will. <laughs> this sturdy animal is also known for the unusual processes she uses for selecting a breeding partner. Although she may appear asexual, this predatory beast has a keen eye for the alpha male of her species, or at least one that she could hector into seeing like into seeming like an alpha male. Although the limber leopard tolerates the alpha's sexual waywardness, she can become entirely vicious towards any female of the species that threatens the alpha status of her mate. And then there's a few more pages about the former first lady. You can't find the book. And wow, look how many pages I wrote. What else do I have? Any Pelosi I had. Kim Jong-il, he's already sleeping with the fishes. Jesse Jackson, Extortus Exploitus, the Reverend Vulture. <laughs> God. Al Gore, Pumas Ignoramus. <laughs> Pumas Ignoramus, the most ignorant of the igneous family of rock, is a form of lava with gas bubbles in it. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself, Rudy Giuliani. And no wonder he wouldn't come on the show. I didn't know I skewered him. Rudy Giuliani, New Yorkist pseudo conservatus. The Gotham Gazelle, I wrote. Okay, you could see why I don't have any friends in the media. Diane Feinstein, Mao Zedongus, The Frisco Red Heron. This is a classic. This is a good book. Maureen Dowd, no, no one knows who she is. Battalaxia Fossilis. <laughs> Howard Dean, no one knows who he is anymore. Where is he right now running a... I imagine Howard Dean retired to Vermont and is running like a hardware store. And he wears Oshkosh Bagash shorts. I don't know where he is. Katie Couric is no longer relevant. I don't even think she's still in business. I think she uh, is a hairdresser somewhere on the Upper East Side. Bill Clinton, Fondlum Ungropium. Fondlum Ungropium, the celebrated Arkansas werewolf, <laughs> is so entirely distinct that there is nothing or no one quite like it in captivity or in the wild. Wolf Boy, as he is sometimes... <laughs> Okay, I'll stop right there. All right, I don't mean to offend anybody because look, it was it was written in good in good faith in a free nation, and in order to make sure people didn't take offense at it, of course, right? No one took offense. I wrote this John Dryden in 1681. I put this as a, as a dedication. The true end of satire is the amendment of vice by correction, and he who writes honestly is no more an enemy to the offender than the physician to the patient. When he prescribes harsh remedies to an inveterate disease, John Dryden, 1681. How'd that work out for Dryden? I don't think too well. I think he wound up in the Tower of London, so far as I know. I don't really know. Now, you know what I did? I, I, I'm having too much fun. I'm waiting for my publisher to give me the results. That's what I'm... I'm uh, hold it. they come in yet? Yes, I will send you the best sell list information the minute I get it. No, not in yet. We're, we're hanging on it every minute. Okay, so for the new version of the political zoo, I was going to add Ted Cruz, who I named Coffea Americas Blandus, the bland American coffee bean. Ann Coulter, Screechus Righteous. <laughs> oh, God. Chris Christie, Rotundus Bridges Too Forest. <laughs> the, the, the big round bridge too far. Joe Biden, Crackpotus over Bidius. Valerie Jarrett, Iranian Plantus. Uh, Mitt Romney, Nice Gaius Phalus. And finally, I was going to put a new, a new uh, one in from Marco Rubio, Double Talkus Ice Cream Manus. <laughs> Come on. I don't know if the average guy gets this. Guys don't have the same sense of humor, women. Women, I think, understand stuff like that. But guys, I, I try to imagine them. Like, I watch car shows at night. With the guy, guys all have these creepy beards. I don't mind a beard, by the way, getting back to the beard topic. I can't stand the beards on these guys on these car shows. They look like perverts, like felon perverts, just like on Home Relief. Like given a thirty days to go weld something, why do they have these creepy molester beards? Can anyone explain that to me? I don't mind a beard on a guy, full beard, half beard, short beard, but what's with the creepy hair? They look like molesters to me. What is that? That look I could do without, like a scraggly thing that runs. Ugh, looks like a something fell out. I don't know. There's just wrong with it. So I watch the car shows and I say to myself, I like that they can weld and then they hit with a hammer and they and they make it look straight and they chrome and they put a handle and they cut and they paint. I love it. Fabulous. I love car shows because things get done and people are, uh, whatever, they can make guns in case there's a revolution. Uh, that's good because they can fabricate. Then Obama could ban body shops because there's metal involved and maybe every piece of metal you buy has to go through a government agent to make sure you're not converting it to a weapon. You never know what could happen under a dictatorship. But nevertheless, I like the car show, but I don't like the beards. They're creepy. That's all. I still have a beard call? 
Here we go. Robert on WMAL on the beard call. Go ahead, Robert. Michael, the reason why so many men are growing beards nowadays, young men, old men, is because the, the ladies, the women, they love it. You, you get all scraggly looking, and they're, hit, they're hitting on you left and right. I'm a married man. i, I got to stay clean cut. If I get scraggly, I get lazy, procrastinate for you know a couple of weeks, get all scraggly looking. It's like you got to find a stick to beat the women off of you. Uh, clean cut. And, I, I don't. Know, I don't have that problem. I don't have that problem. I don't have that problem. I'm not into that. But the thing is, you really think that's what it is? It's sex appeal. Exactly, and it all relates back to the to the prior subject you had a couple of days ago about why men are the cow and milk thing. We can't use a because it's sexist and b because it's true. All right, you get a free copy of Government Zero back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. It is the Savage Nation. As I say, uh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Any minute now, we're going to find out what the ranking is for Government Zero in the first week of its sales. We already know it's number two on the Barnes and Noble, Noble bestseller list, and that's a good thing, given that I'm officially blacklisted in the media. I had wonderful exposure on the Drudge Report. God bless Matt Drudge. Newsmax. God bless Chris Ruddy. World Net Daily. God bless Joe Farah. And then you can count the rest of the outlets that have had me on. I mean, you got Newsmax, I said, Alex Jones, and uh, very few others. I'm officially blacklisted because there's a media bias. They have tried me, and they have convicted me. They will not even let my ideas speak for themselves. Every time I go on a show, such as Newsmax today, already they're comparing it to Hitler already, the psychos. Right, the minute you, the minute you uh, hit them with the truth, right away it's Hitler already in the Holocaust. Every time. No matter what you say, Hitler, Holocaust, Holocaust, Hitler, Hitler, Holocaust. You know, get another tune already. We're living through a mini dictatorship. It's like the mini Ice Age. You're living through a mini dictatorship because you think you own the media. You don't own the media. I'm still pretty strong here on the radio. My book is a bestseller despite you left-wing bums put in office by George Soros and all the other foul money that is polluting the media landscape. So shove it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. 16 of 40 points to save America. Don't assume I'm just sitting here complaining and moaning and groaning. Don't ever complain that I'm only doing that. I'm Michael Savage, the architect of a new America, all explained in Government Zero. Many of you have given up. You feel that the American people are too far gone. You feel that there's no educating them, their minds are made up, they have no minds, their minds are blown, they're on drugs, they're on sex, they're on rock and roll, they're on crack, they're on speed, they're on marijuana, they're on alcohol, and they just don't care. You may be right, <clears throat> but I am the eternal Boy Scout, and I still have hope for the future, and I believe in my heart of hearts that we're going to save this nation from these evildoers. I actually believe it. Or I wouldn't have written Government Zero, and I wouldn't get up every day and do this show. I am the architect of a new America. It's all in Government Zero. I'm very proud of the book. And I want you to understand that there are solutions. And this book belongs on your coffee table for Thanksgiving to awaken your family and your neighborhood. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Despite the media blackout, despite the blacklist, despite the uh, Fox News boycott, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. The book is number three on the New York Times bestseller list. That means the world will see the title and they'll learn something. They will learn that we do believe in borders, language, and culture. They will learn that we have no government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They will learn that we have a government zero, a government of itself, by itself, and for itself. That's what I mean by government zero. There's no stronger statement in the world about what has been done to us, 
and what must be done to save us. It's that simple. Now, there's a news headline that I feel obligated to tell you I don't believe. It's uh, being reported by CNN that U.S. authorities say that there was a bomb on the Russian plane. And it was posted on all the sites. I think it's propaganda. It says, first on CNN, U.S. officials believe ISIS planted bomb on a Russian plane. They have no evidence to this uh, effect. And I'm not rushing to say, oh, yeah, right, for sure, ISIS did it, go get him, Putin. No, 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 no. No, I'll tell you what I think it is. Uh, Obama's very, very insecure. And he gave a speech just the other day saying, oh, people say that I'm not that strong, that Putin's the strong one. But no, no, I'm the strong one. Remember that? And now he's ranked today as the number three most powerful man in the world, not number one. This guy is so insecure that he could have had his media propagandists go out and put out the big lie that we believe ISIS planted a bomb on a Russian plane. Now, how would that help his failing ego? How? Because he thinks it weakens Putin to say, look at that, ISIS got the best of him. What do you think, it's beyond them? I mean, presidents of the past have sunk ships in order to go to war. They've invaded countries and said someone else did it. So what, he's not capable of uh, putting out some propaganda? They own a propaganda machine unlike anything ever seen in the history of the world. Are you kidding me? In addition to the billion dollars a year they must spend on propaganda, they have all the media in their pockets. So right away they go to Barbara Starr, a very reliable source. Another grandmother that should be working in a Brazier factory. And she's reporting right away, CNN Pentagon correspondence, Barbara Starr. First on CNN, U.S. officials believe ISIS planted bomb on Russian plane. Oh, they believe it based on what? You read the story, it says, there is a definite feeling it was an explosive device planted in luggage. The official told CNN, listen to this crap, there is a definite feeling it was an explosive. Have you ever heard a government like this? You talk about government, zero. How much more zero do you get than a moron in the Defense Department saying there's a definite feeling it was an explosive device? How is that for a liberal statement? How about some evidence instead of a feeling? That's like a feeling that we have global warming. There's a definite feeling that the earth is, is heating up because of man's evil uh, uh, nature. There's a definite feeling it was an explosive device planted in luggage. The official who is familiar with the latest U.S. intelligence told CNN. It's propaganda, in my opinion. At least it certainly sounds like it. So where's the proof? The British government announced Wednesday that it had, quote, become concerned that the plane may well have been brought down by an explosive device. Become concerned? If we're not living in the most idiotic times in our lifetime, I'd like to know when was more idiotic than now. The British government did not detail precisely how it reached that conclusion. Are you hear this? They, they came to the conclusion already that ISIS brought the plane down with a bomb. Now, it's possible that they did, but, you know, plane crashes take like months to come to conclusions of what did it. I already know the answer already. They all got the answer. They think, they believe, they suspect. There's an inkling. They, they got an, a, 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 a thrill up their leg. They suspect. They picked up the Ouija board. Are you kidding me? Give me some evidence. Uh, there's a little more here that, uh, that I want to talk about. Oh, it was ISIS that brought the plane down to embarrass Putin? Really? Really? It's not possible that some other country that hates Russia could have brought the plane down in order to embarrass Putin. It's not possible. Need I spell out what I'm saying to you here? With all of the weapons that are given to rebel groups, you're telling me someone in our government could not have given a Stinger missile to one of those maniacs in the Sinai Desert and given them the coordinates of the Russian plane to bring it down in order to embarrass Putin and make him look weak? I didn't say that that's the truth. But, you know, if I'm in, in intelligence, this is what I analyze all the possibilities. I don't just eat what the government gives me for breakfast, because then I'll be Anderson Cooper. And I'm not Anderson Cooper. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. I don't accept anything the government media complex puts out, especially under this guy. And, uh, all right, so the report is ISIS planted a bomb on the plane. But then you read the story, it says they suspect, they think, they feel. No evidence. They already jumped to conclusions. Why? Because the big man in the White House hates Putin, because he knows Putin is a better man, loved more by the world, respected more by the world. And so the big man in the White House wants to embarrass Putin. So what does he do? He says, 
put out a, he go 